go over some senior stuff. My speech will mostly be around uh, everything credit-wise, after school, military, anything like that. So uh, the very first bit of information that I'm going to give you is I am the counselor for last names A through K. Ms. Dainey is the counselor for last names L through Z. Now, that doesn't say that I don't see some people that alphabet is with her. She sees some people that are in my alphabet, so it's whomever you're comfortable with, but your academic information will always come, if you're A through K, to me, L through Z to her, okay? Second thing, the most important thing you can choose, that you can do this year as a parent is to do the senior remind. It's at the very top left-hand corner. So if you would please put that in your phone at some time between now and tomorrow, okay? Believe it or not, your children sometimes don't react quick, okay? They think money grows on trees, okay? Unfortunately, it's your tree that the money's growing on. Okay, so please, please put that information in your phone because any scholarships, any financial aid, anything else comes to that Cedar Remind in a text. And I even sent out my first scholarship today of the year. Miss Wiley is right. Your child, if they're going to college next year, should be looking at college websites and trying to find any scholarship that they up, could apply for now. The local scholarships at the earliest comes out in November, but most of them come out in January and February. Okay? If you are a college-bound athlete, the first bullet is for you. Please talk to your coaches. Only your coaches really know whether you're a college-bound athlete. You cannot be number 99 and sit on the end of the bench in football and receive a college scholarship, okay? Unless number 99 is a really good kicker, okay? But the NCAA is there and the NAIA is there and both have different qualifications to get in. NCAA is based on 16 classes and AIA is based on every class that you take in school and what your GPA and class percentage is. ACT prep sites is the next bullet. The one I'm going to is the one Ms. Bueller, who's an English teacher here at school, has put on the bit.ly. So it'd be the last one. She has put a lot of good information on that last one for your child to do ACT prep sessions. Also, North Hard itself hosts ACT prep sessions after school the sign-ups are near room 305 if you want your child to do that. On average, our teachers that run that ACT prep session can bring your ACT score up three points. That is significant. Okay, they can teach little tricks to help you out, and for the most part, you come up with three points. Students wanting to request their transcript to go to a college must do so through parchment.com. Ms. Skeeters, our clerk, will be giving you and your student a parchment code to get in. But that is up to the student. The key mistake that we see is the students put the year now, they put 2018, instead of their graduate year, which is 2019. So make sure when you put your year in, you're putting 2019. That is a big mistake that we have to take care of. Usually you order your transcript at least twice during your year. Now for admissions, and then after the year ends, so we can send your final transcript off to your college. Or else they won't let you schedule and register beforehand. College university applications are on the website. There's usually a fee. Usually it's around $40. If you are free reduced lunch, you need to come see myself or Miss Danny and get a fee waiver application. Okay? 
We are glad to keep that money in your pocket. Another thing that's on the FAFSA website as well as a different website is boys that are 17, 18 years old must sign up for the civil service. Okay? That is a must. So if you turn 18 within the calendar year, you must sign up for civil service. Okay? College visits. North Harden gives two college visits to children if they do it the right way. And here's how we do it. The person gets a college visit day. Hopefully, if we have it our way, it's on a Friday, because that's when the really good college visits are. Call it really good college visits are not on Saturday because they don't get a pulse of the campus. Everybody's happy on a Saturday. Okay, they've been through a whole week of school and they're happy. Okay, so go on campus, go down on a Thursday night, spend the night, walk the campus, and on Friday, try to get one of those really good college visits where you get to do it with a child that's a student in school there, and you also may get to see some of your major. Sit in the classrooms, do things like that. That does not happen on a Saturday. Saturday, you just do a whole lot of walking on campus. Okay? Go to Miss Hart. In the attendance office, you get a form, you bring it to myself or Miss Danny, we sign, and then whoever shows you on your tour, they sign. You bring it back, you're not absent that day. Okay, and you get two of those. Credits. This is a very key thing. It takes 26 credits to graduate from North Harbor. Okay? Four English, four math, three science, Three social studies, one arts and humanities, one PE in health, and ten electives. If your child is iffy on that, they need to see one of us immediately. We need to set up some goals, we need to get a credit summary, we need to do all kinds of things so we can get them to the finish line. Okay? Attendance. This is huge for seniors. You cannot miss more than seven classes and during that class period. So if your child checks in late eight times the first trimester to first period, they're going to get their credit taken away for that class. Even if they get a hundred or a ninety-nine, it won't matter. They'll get taken away until they make up the hours of attendance. That is called seat time. That has to happen. Usually, they go awry for a little while, prom hits, they make up all their hours again, and then they start again after prom, of not coming to school sometimes, and then they get in trouble there at the very end where they really, really need the credits. So make sure your child is here, make sure they're present, make sure they're not missing a whole bunch of days. We did the college websites there for scholarship information. So any school in the state of Kentucky should be right there. If it's not, come see me. We'll do a little website search, and I'll help you out there. So we'll miss Danny. Free scholarships. Everybody likes that word. Please go to some of those sites to see if you qualify. Yes, there is scholarships for left-handed people. You just got to find it. Okay? You got to see what you qualify for. You got to search and search and search. Okay? The next page. These are the local scholarships that we gave out last year. So, when I'm texting you this information for scholarships this year, look for these. I will give the scholarship name, the criteria for the scholarship, whether it's a 3.0, essay, two letters of recommendation. I will give all that. I will give multiple information to see if your child, now if you have, your child has a 2.7 and the scholarship says 3.0, can't go for that one. At no time during the year probably will come up three points. Okay? 
we will help, we will help, we will help your child to do anything. We just gotta communicate and talk. Okay? A lot of these scholarships are military. Some are through sororities and fraternities in the local area. Some, you, there's a Kentucky Concrete Scholarship. So, look at the criteria for that one. See if you qualify. Farm Bureau is not real big around here. There's a scholarship. Usually one person goes for it and gets it for North Harbor. Okay? Also, here's the key word to cut your scholarships almost in half to maybe three-fourths is this word, essay. If your child sees essay, most of them will not go for the scholarship. It cuts it almost in half to three-fourths. They're not willing to do it. What they do not know is that you could probably use the same essay for this scholarship as for this one, as for this one. Okay? So, if you get that, my mother last year, my son graduated last year, my mother was in charge of his scholarships. Whenever a scholarship came out, he had a folder on his bed that night from her. God bless her. He had a folder right there. And she gave him a timeline. This is doing a week. It wasn't doing a week, but she was making sure that he did it in a week. Okay? Out of all the ones he filled out, 24, 25, somewhere around there, he got two. Okay? But that's still two. That's helping our family out immensely. Okay? So, every little bit counts. The last one are your ACT dates. Here's how important this is. For admission, you can go all the way to the June test date for admission. For scholarships, you got to have your ACT score by November. So even the, the December test sometimes will not get in in time for them to give you a scholarship. Most public schools in this state, I'm talking about the Kentuckys, Louisville's, Westerns, Easterns, things of that nature, they work backwards. They give their scholarships to the 36s, 35s, 34s, and then they move downward. A good goal for you, first time taking that test, I want to see a 21. Second test, I would like to see the first qualifying scholarship score, which is a 24. From there, it goes to 28 for most schools. And then from there, it goes to 31. So you can see the discrepancy between that. Also remember, Kentucky is a, considered a southern state, which means this. They have minority quotas that they have to maintain. So, a lot of our scholarships in this state have minority scholarships. So if you're Native American, African American, Hispanic, from Korea, from India, please make sure you pay attention to that. The qualifier for UK only is a 3.0 and a 21 that gets you $3,500 automatically. Okay? So as you can see, you rise your score, the, two, the, the costs keep on going up. Okay? We are here to help your child. There is nothing better than when a child comes to us knowing what they're going to do. Signing with the military. Getting a college scholarship. Getting that hard to work job that they work for at EC3 and all of a sudden Akabono is offering them a job at is way up there and they never even have to set foot in the school. All those are wonderful things to us and to be honest with you, it's why we do what we do is because of your children and their success. We will talk to you. We will meet with you. I'll go, and I know Miss Danny will too, we'll go to the nth degree for your child. And we're willing to. 
you just got to ask. Make yourself present, and we'll try to help out as much as we can. Thank you, guys. Miss Dave? Thank you. Good evening. I'm going to talk to you really quick. I know Ms. Wiley already touched a little bit on dual credit. I handle dual credit here at North Harden, so many of you sitting here are taking dual credit classes. Um, those classes are for college credit and high school credit. So you're going to see them on your high school transcript, and you will see them on your top college transcript. The biggest thing I say when I go into dual credit classes is, if you are going to sign up to take a dual credit class, know what you're signing up for. It is a college class for a reason. I don't want kids to get a DC in a dual credit class and they start out college with a 1.0 GPA. Okay? So think about that. So if you're doing dual credit, take it seriously because it will be on your college transcript and that GPA is calculating as of now. Okay? Now, the state will pay for two classes per student. Some took it as juniors, some don't take it until their senior year. That's fine. In order to qualify for the dual credit classes, a lot of those are based on ACT scores and the benchmarks. Okay? Some of them, depends on what university, I think chemistry, dual credit chemistry is based on a GPA. Um, so it just depends on what college we're going through for that specific class. Okay? Now, I will say if you're taking college algebra, that is not until trimester three, okay? There's a dual credit psych class trimester three as well, but there's also one going on now. Trimester one and trimester two, I will be getting all those at one time, and when I say that, I mean going to those classes, talking to those teachers, kids in trimester two that start dual credit, and I'll be pulling them down, getting them to apply online, making sure they're ready when trimester two starts so they can hit the ground running. Okay? ECTC does a lot of our dual credit. They usually come over, we partner with them, make sure your child is set up with everything they need to log in to access their dual credit information through ECTC. Okay, now, I said the same play pays for two, and then after that, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's the parent's responsibility most of the time, but it's really the student's responsibility, okay? Now, the price for a dual credit class, if you take it and wait and take it in college, it's going to be about $468. Like I said, the state pays for two. So on that third one, you're responsible. You get to pay $156 since they're taking it in high school. Okay? Every class after those two, you're responsible for the payment. All right. Now, some of you all are logging in to your Keys account looking for the dual credit thing. The little link or whatever. It's not there yet. It's not supposed to be there yet. I am, we have to compile a report. Something else I'll be doing. I'll be going to each of their classes and getting emails. Do not give me your school email. Same reason Ms. Wally said. You need that email to follow you. Okay? So don't use your school email. They're going to pull that report. Once they pull that email to match with that student, that will go to your Keys account. You'll be able to log in. This page right here with the three papers on it, the last two pages, talk about getting into your Key account, picking the two classes you want paid for, if you haven't already had to pay for, and also being able to view your keys money, which some of those are still messed up and we are working on those, we know that. So you should not see that dual credit link right now. That's okay. You'll probably see it, like she said, at the beginning of September, and then you can get on there and start picking, okay, I want them to pay for English 101 and 102, and then after that I'm covering the rest. I will tell you, if you do not Get on there and specify what you want paid for. They will not pay it. Okay? I can't log on. Mr. Campbell can't log on. You all have to log on and do it to that account and pick those classes. 
If you have any questions, I'll be happy to help, but we do not have access to those accounts. So make sure you pick those classes. I think I've covered everything. If you have any questions, you can always email me. Yes. Good question. He said, after the two are paid for, where do we pay the money? You will pay the money to the university that that class is through. Let me give you the rundown. Some of you might be chemistry and stats are through Campbellsville. Everything else besides EDU 250 is through ECTC. Most of you all, I believe, can get on their ECTC account. I know some site kids are doing it online. You can sometimes get on their account and do it online or call ECTC and pay them over the phone. Most of the time, they don't really expect that money until the end of the year. So that gives you kind of time to start saving if you know you're going to come out of pocket on some of those classes. Yes, ma'am. Semester, trimester three kids, I will be getting with them at the very beginning of trimester three, and we will be doing the same thing as I did with the T1 and T2 students. But they don't take their classes and No, it will not be time. Now, if they're in a class now, okay, so if they don't have one until T3, they will not, they will not be pulled yet. Okay, Ms. Skeeters is going to come up and share a little bit more. And as always, if you have questions, let us know. Me and Mr. Campbell will help you as much as we can. So, I'll be real brief. I'm Miss Skeeters. I'm one of the senior sponsors. The other one has a soccer game tonight, so she didn't make it. If, you, if everybody looks in their folder, they've got a green form that looks like this. This is most of the information you're going to need for the senior year to stay updated on what's going on. If you have any questions, you can always email either one of us. Our names are at the top of the page. Uh, like tonight, we've got 25 seniors that have already paid their senior dues. If you'll read one of the lines there, it says the first 60 seniors to pay their dues, their name will go in a pot and we'll draw one out and they'll get, so they'll get one free ticket to prom. When we, we also use Senior Remind for anything we do with the senior class. So put that in your phone, like I said earlier, and I'll help you get the information from us too. Uh, prom is already set. It's April 13th. It says it on the sheet. I am the one in charge of parchment. I will get a code to your suit like Mr. Campbell's already said. I'm going to give it to him by the end of this week, okay? And then the paper you got in here, there's a, your the blue highlights. That will help you get on parchment. Um, and if you write a check, I will need the parent's birthday on the check. And the students can come pay their senior dues basically any time with me. Before school, after school, during school, I'll take it whenever. But just make sure your birthday's on it for me, please. Okay? Any questions? senior trip. We are planning a senior trip. The only reason we don't have all the information on there is it's got to go before uh, the board. This, I think it's going to go the September month meeting to get the approval for it and then we'll start making payments and we'll get information out and do it on the senior remind also. Okay? Does that help you? Okay. Anything else? We good? And we will be mailing home another one of the green forms. It might be another color. We're just going to make sure every parent gets one, okay? We just gave you this one tonight. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, this didn't end up. Now's the time to be honest with your children. Okay? They need to know that Bellarmine, which costs $57,000 per year, and they give you $10,000 scholarship, and that's still going to be really, really hard on the family. Okay? Be honest with your children. When your children come in to see us, if you come in to see us, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. It's the easiest way to hand out information to each other. You be honest with me, your child's being honest with me, I'm going to be honest with them. That way we get it all out there in the middle, and we can make solutions from that. 
We already have five colleges coming to see us. That's been on your, your students' remind already. University of Kentucky, University of Louisville, Alabama Huntsville, Transylvania, and Bellarmine are all, all coming in for a visit. We will be doing a minority trip probably to the University of Kentucky and the University of Louisville both this year. They want uh, our minority students on their campus. So we will be taking a trip and that will be the top 40 minority kids in our school. So make sure your child signs up for those trips. It doesn't matter to me. I'm a die-hard University of Kentucky fan. But if the University of Louisville offered my child a full ride, it would be go-karts. <laughs> and that's really tough for me to say right now. Okay? So, I tell you all about a minority trip. If you're the parent of a minority, and they can go to UK and UVL, and UK offers them 45000 but they really want to go to UVL, and they offer thirty-five then either you should probably go to the University of Kentucky or you should go back to Louisville and say, listen, the school down the road has offered me ten more thousand dollars. What can you do? You play colleges against each other because guess what they're going to do right now? They're going to play your child against another child. So just do the same. Okay? I really, really, really appreciate parents and students alike coming out tonight. And this is why the North Harden is such a wonderful place uh, to work and to go to school. Thank you all.